On the 3rd of November, right after Gabe Newell's birthday, the developers of Dota 2 published the second part of Battle Pass. Every time Valve releases a big update for the game based on Source 2, there are a lot of references to other projects that are being developed at the same time. This happens because Valve utilizes the same iteration of the engine for all new games. And the recent update in Dota is no exception. Hey everyone, Max at the microphone again, and today we're gonna talk about how weird lines of leaked code hints towards CSGO on Source 2 and the new Half-Life FPS game. So let's get right into it. Scope.gg analyze your game on Face It and Matchmaking to become the best player possible. Recently, they've added a new feature called Pre-Match. It helps to analyze your opponent's behavior even before the game starts. Just paste your Face It lobby link and check if your opponents usually play aggressive or defensive. Learn their favorite positions, weapons, and overall summary of the team. And to be ready for the start of the match, keep your eye on the warm-up timer. Learn how to predict enemies' plans and movements by clicking the link down below. Scope.gg. Feel the game. Let's start with the most obvious stuff. There are direct references to the CSGO assets. The first one is a custom paid agent skin on the game characters. In this case specifically, it's a woman from the SWAT unit. Considering that the mention of this model appeared right next to the hair material, we can assume that the developers are testing a hair transparency shader on this particular agent. And the second asset is especially interesting. It's a model for the weapon called SG553, and don't be confused because of the naming, because in CSGO files it's called exactly a RAIF or rifle SG556. However, the model mentioned in CSGO is brand new. But how do I know that? Well, the weapon models on the first source and CSGO in particular are divided into two variants. View model with a V prefix for the first person view, and the world model with a W prefix for the third person view. But the new model has a common weapon prefix. And based on this, we can assume that from now on weapons will use only one same asset and will be optimized via smart LOD system. Besides that, there are also references to new models and materials hinting at remakes of such maps as DE Mirage and DE Inferno. Assets with similar names are already used on these maps, but some of them have different endings or slightly different words and numbers. And from that we can assume that in addition to just porting the game to the new engine, we can also expect full-fledged map remakes. This assumption greatly ties with our spionage on CSGO developers. From May to September they were joining maps with the S2 prefix and probably some of them are related to this remakes. Also, part above called user messages got updated in CSGO on October 21st. Typically, the thing is used to display all sorts of text notifications in the game UI. For an example, chat messages when someone on the server opens a case or pop-up stats at the end of the round. But what a coincidence, two weeks later the exact same user messages part above update appears in the Dota 2. And what's interesting, some sort of DLL check appeared right next to the previous update in the same protobuf. Basically, all DLL files stand for data libraries, which are accessed by executable.exe files. The only check related to the text notifications in the player UI that I can think of is the difference in the versions. So let's say if one user plays CSGO on Source 1 and the other one on Source 2, they will both get a warning like they can't play together because of the version difference. Honestly, it's a pure speculation, but if you have some alternative ideas how to properly explain it, please let me know in the comments. Speaking of obvious stuff, once again there was a mention of the GoTV system directly from CSGO, and a separate tool for compiling cosmetic items, and particularly cases, keys, weapon skins, knives and gloves. This tool has already leaked before and I perfectly explained it in one of the previous videos. Secondly, there was a mention of a new tool for compiling CSGO assets. At the moment, all data about items, weapons, skins and stickers are stored in a single file called Items Game. In general, this method is quite confusing and inconvenient, and probably devs already tired of keeping this mess going. We can assume that from now on all of the items, weapons, agents and even skins will be stored as a separate assets. Probably each asset will have its own text file with .vdata format, which can be easily edited through the source to tools. In addition, it's now possible to set 
specific text on weapons in tools and some sort of item to expand the maximum capacity of your inventory. Also, there are strings related to some kind of Source 2 FPS game. And this is especially important since at the moment there are no first person games on this engine. Half-Life Alex and Apache Desk Job don't really count because they utilize a non-standard player controller. So, there are mentions of the weapon state, the number of bullets, the status of automatic or semi-automatic mode, options to mount attachments or some sort of modifications to the weapons, changing the sensitivity and accuracy of the mouse, changing the first-person FOV angle, aim metrics which is used to change the position of the third-person player's view, mentions of hitboxes tied to bones and the lock compensation system and interpolation, which is necessary for the people with a large difference in ping so they can comfortably play on the same server. Also some sort of asset system and a tool for importing assets into a workshop from the first source to the second one. Which probably means that the developers do not intend to automate this process and will delegate this problem to the community. So if you have any published maps or skins, you'll probably need to go through the porting process yourself. On the one hand, it's kinda good, because it will filter out a whole bunch of outdated and irrelevant content. But on the other hand, it's not good, because people with a large number of publications will have to work a lot more. In addition, there was a reference to some unusual player movement type without using ticks, or just tickless. For those who don't know, calculations in all existing games are done in three ways. Based on time, based on frame rate, and based on game ticks. Using time-based or frame-rate-based calculations for the FPS games is not efficient. Because everyone's FPS is different and it's hard to round time to integral numbers. So in the end, tick rate is the only suitable solution, since one second is divided by a fixed value for all players. In CSGO, for an example, it's equal to 64, so the calculations occur every 15 milliseconds. Also, tick rate is used not only in shooters or multiplayer games, but also in many single player games. So either Valve came up with some completely new, more efficient way, or we are talking about some asynchronous or turn-based multiplayer. The following strings are indicating the further development of some game in the Half-Life universe. And to be more particular, it refers to the interactions with the gravity gun, like pulling and throwing objects and changing the power. And this once again hints that the future game will be played as someone in a protective HEV suit with a gravity gun. Seventhly, things that definitely confirm the development of some game in Half-Life universe. Personally, previous leaks were good enough for me, but now it's just impossible to deny. HEV suit plug the attach, NPC hound eye item attach, and grenade launcher fire sticky. So the player will be able to plug and unplug the HEV suit somewhere. Most likely we are talking about the medical stations. Similar VR mechanics has been already done for the game Vertigo, the author of which helped Valve in the process of developing Half-Life Alex. Also, the player will have an opportunity to attach some items to NPC creatures. In this exact case, it's like the many-eyed dogs from the first Half-Life. And also there is a grenade launcher with sticky bombs, similar to one that Demo Man from Team Fortress 2 has. It could be either related to the Citadel game or a project codenamed HLX. By the way, in the Citadel protobuffs, which is also assumed to be a game in the Half-Life universe, there is a new string related to the spectator target. In CSGO, it's used for the players who spectate the game in a neutral team or after death. And this is another possible proof that Citadel is a multiplayer game. Also, once again, there was a mention of RTX ray tracing and compiling maps with the GPU. Sixthly, map compilation and like baking using the power of your graphics card. For those who don't know, right now Source 2 is only utilizing CPU power. And because of that, large and complex locations can take up to few days for final compilation. Baking with the GPU will be tightly coupled with the RTX ray tracing technology, which will greatly speed up the process for map makers. Judging by the strings, in addition to baked maps, ray tracing in real time will appear in one of the future Valve games. In other words, it's like real shadows and reflections from objects, just like in Cyberpunk or any other modern game. 
And speaking of graphics, in almost every Dota update there are more and more lines related to shader compilation on different kinds of hardware and operating systems, including mobile ones like Android and iOS. In this case the acronym SM means shader model. And this sounds especially interesting in the context of the tweet which was posted by one of the Source 2 developers. It says that they finally cut it out OpenGL and DirectX 9 support from the new engine. And now Source 2 runs exclusively on Vulkan and DirectX 11. According to him this is a big deal, because Vulkan makes it easy to port the games to mobile systems, Linux and the Mac OS. Previously there were some rumors that Valve was planning to develop mobile versions of their game like CSGO and Dota 2 in order to compete with similar projects from the Riot games. Since Valve is so caring about graphics on Source 2, there are some new strings possibly related to the addition of Photo Mod, like one that's already available in a spiritual successor of Gary's mod called Sandbox. Photo Mod, for those who sadly don't know, is a tool to pause the game, choose a perfect angle, adjust all sorts of effects and make a cool screenshot. And for the first time in 4 months the system for generating random maps called Smart Props appeared again. Previous leak was on the 9th of June, in the battle report update. Map generator works with the help of two new systems, one called Smart Props and the other one Locator. Basically the map will have some basic geometry layout and the game will fill these locations with random objects, like doors, crates, buildings and other sorts of stuff to make each round feel unique and interesting. These props can change its size, rotation angle, offset distance, color and its shade, weight and much, much more. In addition, there are strings related to boss navigation system for the FPS game, in particular to move under the water or in the air. And most likely it's connected to the new physics based vehicles, A3, a super advanced system for the physics based cars. If I start going through each line one by one, this video will take another 20 minutes. But in a nutshell, they are doing the most realistic behavior for the vehicles. There is transmissions, the suspension, the detailed physics of the wheels, the engine and the joints, the fuel system, air resistance and pistons. If someone would let me look at these lines without any context, I would think that Valve was making some sort of full-fledged racing simulator. Vehicles can be flipped, other players with certain subclasses can sit on them as a passengers, you can mount weapons on them, different parts of them can be replaced or even upgraded and much, much more. Apparently developers have started to develop these systems furthermore, and in addition to the custom modifications we'll have the opportunity to build new types of vehicles from the ground up including transport that can fly, as the developers have a specific airborne check for the current state, whether it's in the flight right now or on the ground. If you would like to look at all stuff yourself, I've left all links in the description. Make sure to check out my previous video where I talk about how Valve leaked their new game called Neon Prime, and don't forget to support me by subscribing, liking and writing some comments. Until next time, увидимся!